yeah we got it back from paint and already started putting some stuff on it of course um, we had to put the whole front body panels back on because we're not exactly done with the front end but we just wanted to get it out to paint uh, the only stuff we really have to modify is on this front substructure we got to do the hood pin stalks as I had mentioned previously in another video and mount the intercooler and some other stuff to this thing um, so we threw the body panels back on for that uh, the steel it came out really good though uh, really cool finish and um, it is easy to touch up as well which we've already started to do in a couple spots if you forget to do something to your chassis or you need to modify it you can just touch it up and smooth some stuff out there but yeah we've already started locating some of our stuff for plumbing the chassis the water lines there uh, got it up on the lift the car is probably going to be black again you think probably it's really dirty but curls curls did a good job on the paint I probably just scratched it doing that. Did I scratch that body, guys? I don't know. I will. So, bolting a couple things in place here. Uh, little by little, that's how it starts. Get everything in where it's going to go, and then we can start uh, measuring and, and listing out everything for plumbing. So, definitely uh, looking good, though. Looking good. One of the parts we're not going to reuse in Mike's car this year from his old car is the fuel cell. And one of those reasons is because we wanted to swap to the new style radium uh, surge tank setup. The new style, it's got a couple upgrades. Um, the wiring is a lot more simplified on the outside for the individual pumps. It has one outlet and um, he also wanted to keep the old cell for his other car as well. So this kind of made sense. Um, the foam in the old cell was a little broken down as well, so instead of buying all new foam, uh, we'll worry about that later, and we just have like a brand new cell that's known good. But it was purchased without uh, fuel pumps in it. So we got everything we need here, some new filters, a lift pump, two new pumps to go in the surge tank, and the required hardware and hoses and connectors. So let's take this thing apart and we'll show you inside of it. So here's the inside of a fuel safe cell using a radium FCST. And the, with the old uh, top plates like we used to run, you would have, uh, it was just like a plate with the fill and it would just have bulkhead fittings going straight through the plate. And then you would run hoses from the bottom of the, the plate to pumps that uh, would normally be mounted like usually strapped to the back center. And then you'd run pickup hoses to the rear corners or you might use Hydromat, which is a Holly product that's pretty awesome that would lay in the bottom of the cell and that's that would be your fuel pickup um, but uh, and that, that had a lot more complicated like foam setups normally uh, this one is just an oval cut in the center nice and easy um, but a little tip for you is you can tell when your foam is disintegrating which happens even faster with ethanol based fuels uh, you take the corner of it and if you can pick the corner and like pull a piece off relatively easy then you know your foam's going bad it's time to replace it this stuff's brand new though so it's not going anywhere we got the FCST opened up and give you a quick rundown of how this thing works you'll have a lift pump mounted over here that actually sits like open in the cell here like exposed in the foam and that pump will uh, literally lift the fuel into this chamber here right that the other two pumps uh, sit in so basically this thing is constantly filled with fuel as it has a lift pump feeding it and then also the return from the engine 
feeds back into it as well. So you you always have fuel in this. You never have to worry about the the main pumps starving the engine for fuel. All right. So since I started doing this fuel cell install, um, the power is going out in the shop. Yeah, we had the big bay doors open, so we get some natural light. And I got this really cool Mac Tools DeWalt to drop light. Runs off my 20 volt batteries. Working for me here. Um, sadly, I came to a standstill. The brackets provided for this lift pump are not tall enough. So I measured the depth of the cell, basically from this flange to the bottom of the bladder 10 inches and even if I only put one hose clamp holding this lift pump in we're still going to be a half to three quarter inch off the bottom of the cell and you want this to be about one quarter inch from the bottom of the cell so we got to wait for these brackets to come from radium is their special order uh, they make just longer ones that are like trim to fit it looks like so this part of the job is uh, on hold for now. Uh, I can kind of show you how this thing works though meanwhile before so once this gets back here I'm probably just gonna button it up and put it together and not do any filming. So um, these pumps mount in here and you can mount up to three pumps which is cool. So one, two, and then there's a port for a third that they give you a little block off plug for a little block off plug sorry working in the dark here and um, the pumps they're just uh, Walbro pumps they just key right into this cool little bracket and then it has this little strainer filter that bolts on the bottom that's replaceable so yeah pretty trick Uh, a little tip for if you ever find yourself installing these is um, the barbs on this fill plate are 3 8 inch and it's 5 16 hose and 5 16 outlet on the fuel pumps. So it's a real pain to get them on there. Uh, you either want to put like a little bit of lube on them or soften them up and stretch them a little bit to get them on here otherwise you'll end up ripping them. Um, also, here you have this like plastic convoluted hose, right, for the lift pump. Uh, that doesn't flex at all. So, uh, the best thing to do with that is to heat it up just a little bit. And to do that, I use this uh, little DeWalt heat gun. Uses our uh, same batteries as our drills and impact guns, which is pretty cool. It's a cool little tool. It's not super powerful, like you can't do like big Raychem boots with it or real long runs of DR25, but for something like this it's really handy and you don't have to plug it in, just get it out of the box and get to work. Some fancy stuff here. This is the Powerhouse Racing 5 stage dry sump kit. Big billet oil pan, very cool. Billet pump. Belt. No rings. Uh, I got a new rear seal retainer from Toyota for the new block. And a couple accessories. Uh, we'll go over all this stuff in detail uh, as we put it on the engine for you. HGK motor plate. Again, we're going to clean that up before we put it on the new engine. Mike's new engine. Still a 3 liter, uh, rather simple build compared to some other cars out there. They're uh, CP 9 to 1 pistons, manly turbo tough I beams, and billet main caps with ARP hardware. Mm, nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, still make plenty of power, be pretty, plenty strong. Nice and nice and clean. So we're gonna put the start by putting some fresh O-rings in here, and then putting this HDK front cover slash motor plate on.
here you can see the get a better look at the billet main caps rods ARP hardware next step for this thing I'm gonna bolt the oil pan on which is this big beautiful work of art from daily engineering Working these uh, oil pan bolts on using this snap on digital torque wrench, doing all the 8 millimeter head bolts to 15 foot pounds, and then these bigger 10 millimeter threads to 30 foot pounds. Now we got the oil pan on, we're going to mount the pump to the pan. And if you're not familiar with how this works, oil gets pulled off the crank into the pan, into the scavenge of the pan. You get scavenged up through these ports here. Pulled out of the pump right there. So, no paperwork or anything comes with this dry sump kit, but it looks like we have a block clearance issue here. See here on the back of the back of the pump here, the air oil separator. So now that we got the pump on, uh, after just clearancing that little nub, not a big deal. Uh, we are getting rid of the whole traditional oil system, including the filter. This is where the filter would normally go. And normally you would have the oil come out of the engine here, right? Into the diaph like through the diaphragm of the filter, and then out the center of the filter into here. And because we are going to run external filter, we are going to just use this that comes with the dry sump kit that goes right there, All right? So that will be the feed. So that will come out of here into your oil filter, then an oil cooler, and then back into here. Uh, we are probably not going to run an oil cooler as with the dry sump is going to give us a whole lot more capacity of oil. And I don't think we're going to have a uh, hot oil issue especially with the short runs of drifting but if we do decide we need one we can always add it um, just a couple of lines amount of cooler but for now i think we're just going to come out of our pump to our filter that is probably going to mount somewhere around here on the frame rail and then back into the engine well that's it for the engine assembly for now we got to wait for the cylinder head to get back from head games, then we can put that on and finish bolting everything to the engine, and then we'll put it in the car, put the turbos and intakes on, and start plumbing some stuff. Looking forward to that. Uh, one of the things we're adding to the dry sump tank here is a uh, heating element. Um, it just goes right in our oil tank, and it runs off 110 volt power which uh, so while we're sitting in the pits, just plug this thing in, get the oil temps up, and warm up, it's like immediate. So don't have to worry about that. And again, if it's like a really hot day and you're not worried about it, you just don't plug it in. Easy as that, but it's nice to have. It's a cheap little addition, and most oil tanks already have this bung uh, installed here. That's about it for this episode. Uh, I'll get a bunch more stuff for you guys next week, maybe. Yeah, we're going to start really rolling along on this thing. So, uh, I'll try and have some...
cool footage for you. Probably a lot of uh, random things getting installed and start mapping out the plumbing as we wait on some more parts.